The eighth State of the Nation address delivered by President Cyril Ramaphosa last Thursday at the Cape Town City Hall did not impress opposition parties at all. Well, on the other hand, the African National Congress views the speech as a roadmap for the nation's future. Now, Ramaphosa's speech was debated in Parliament on Tuesday and Wednesday, with many reflecting on the issue of escalating crime, high unemployment rate, inadequate housing, and an unstable economy and poor education system in townships and rural areas. Hi, Tudumelang. Good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwana. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined by three political parties, the African Transformation Movement, Build One South Africa, Africa, as well as Rise and Sansi. And they're here to basically give us their thoughts on President Cyril Ramaphosa's sauna that happened last week in Cape Town. Now joining us uh, right now is Bafana Chabalala, who is the chairperson of the African Transformation Movement Youth League. Uh, he's joining us in studio. Bafana, much appreciated for coming. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening to your viewers and thank you for having us. Much appreciated. I mean, before we get into, you know, all things, um, some of the key things that were said during the State of the Nation address, let me get your reaction of the whole speech in its entirety as the Youth uh, League there at ATM. Um, the speech was not a reflection of South Africa. That is not a true reflection of South Africa. All that we listened to was lies, lies, and nothing but lies. The president is not in touch with reality. He speaks about a Tinsolo that does not even exist because the reality of the matter is that the youth is unemployed. The youth does not have access to education. The youth does not have access to jobs. The youth does not have access to business funding and business opportunities. So the picture that he painted on the State of the Nation address is not what the youth is experiencing on the ground. And it's on that basis we do not accept that State of the Nation. Mm. I mean, there's also another key thing that uh, ATM has raised, uh, you know, your leader there, uh, Vyo Zungula, was questioning the timing also of the new rules in Parliament, I mean, raise concerns that this is somehow an attempt to gag parliamentarians so that they cannot be able to address their concerns. Do you think that uh, um, the, the new rules are unconstitutional? They are unconstitutional. Look, uh, Parliament is a platform designed by legislature so that it holds the executive accountable. So in that house, the duty of, the, of, of that house is to make sure that the executive, which is the president and his cabinet, account to the house. Now, if you are saying to people who are holding you accountable, how are they supposed to hold you accountable? Then it tells you that in a way you are creating a platform that is not conducive for parliamentarian to hold you accountable. Mm. Let's get into some of the things that uh, the president said. What is it that you think you know was left out or was supposed to be the message to resonate with uh, South Africans? I mean, there's quite an array of issues that the country is facing now, from economy to electricity to no jobs uh, to crime. There's quite a lot of issues. Uh, what do you think the president needed to touch on? Firstly, we were expecting the president to resign because this administration has failed this money. However, he spoke of load shading. There is no plan in action that the ANC government has to ensure that they end load shedding. And that has resulted in the unemployment rate that we have. And there was no plan also about the jobs. There's also no plan regarding students that are supposed to be starting their academic year. There's also no plan about rural development. And there's also no plan about the land. So what we listened to, to, to the State of the Nation address is not what we had expected. What we expect is the president to come and map up a way to say, from here to, from here where to. But the president did none of that, and we are not inspired in him, we are not inspired in the State of the Nation address, because it, it provides no solution, and all those solutions are found in the manifesto of the ATM. Mm. I mean, speaking about land, uh, he did mention that about 25% of the farmland was now in the black ownership. And then the target by 2030 will be around 30%. But um, um, I mean, what do you make of these figures? Do you believe what he's saying? Let's, let's entertain that to say maybe let's say it's true. It's been 30 years and only after 30 years you're telling us that 25% of the majority of the population is owning the land. When we have been saying that we need expropriation of land without compensation, we need this land for business, we, we need this land for farming, we need this land for mining. The economy of our country is dependent on the land. 
if he says the land has been retained 25% of it, why is that not uh, uh, reflecting on the economy? You look at the economy, the role players in the economy is the minority in the population. So the land question is a lie and we are saying we need total expropriation of land without compensation and the ANC has been there for 30 years. They cannot tell us that after 30 years they've only managed to retain 25% of the land. It means 1% per year on average. We cannot accept that. Let's talk about the state of education. Um, what's your view as ATM to the state of education in the country, be it basic, be it higher education? So currently the state of the education in the country does not speak to the skill needs that we have in the country. Secondly, the education is not compulsory. As the ATM in our manifesto, we are saying, one, we need basic education to be compulsory. Two, it must be skilled based so that everyone, when they are completed with school, they can be able to get a job. However, also saying with higher education, it must be free. It cannot be that at this day and age, black children are still applying for NSFAS. Uh, higher education should be free and should be regulated by government to ensure that it addresses the needs of the country. We cannot be producing graduates to go and stay at home because of there are no jobs, because of the courses they did are not aligned to our skill bases. So we want a basic uh, compulsory education and then we also want a free decolonized higher education that will speak to the skills shortages in our country. Mm. Just lastly, uh, Bafana, before I let you go, I mean, so what happens now, uh, you know, from ATM's perspective? Are you, uh, as an organization, you know, going out there to convince South Africans that actually ATM is the party for the people? Um, what is the message that you are spreading as ATM? So as ATM, what we are saying is that we are ready to serve, we are ready to govern. In that one, we want, uh, we want to, to root out corruption in the country. We want to open, re-industrialize our country, opening factories that is creating jobs. We want, for example, to say factories in the locations must be reopened, that uniform is produced. It cannot be that a country as big as South Africa, we are importing toothpicks. We can produce that in our country. We are saying the, the mines must be nationalized so that they are owned by the state. And then the miners who are mining those farms benefit from those mining. So in essence, what we are saying, we, we are saying we want to transform the economy of this country. We want to transform our society for a better tomorrow. And it starts with voting for the ATM. Fana Chabalala, much appreciated for coming. Unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but we'll definitely engage with you soon because we are heading to the election. So obviously, it won't be the last time that I see you in the show. That was Bafana uh, Chabalala, who is the chairperson of the African Transformative uh, Movement Youth League, weighing in on the SONA 2024 following the debate held in Parliament on Tuesday and Wednesday. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. Tonight we are discussing the state of the nation address with various political parties and, uh, you know, just hearing what their thoughts were about it. And uh, as the address has seen a lot of backlash from citizens as well as political parties. Now joining us to discuss uh, the matter is Built One South Africa youth leader, Henry Masoko is joining us in studio. Henry, much appreciated. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tabo. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Look, man, um, uh, you know, the president said quite a lot of issues. I mean, the debate has been going on uh, on uh, what he said uh, as part of the state of the nation. But uh, I think one of the key thing was that uh, he was blaming the state of the country to state capture. Let me get your thoughts on that. You know, Tabo, you can blame your previous relationships as much as you can, but the fact of the matter is that you contribute to the state of your current relationship mm -hmm. and you are solely responsible for that. I mean, the other thing is that he was there during the state capture years. So it's not like he was on exile somewhere, then only introduced post state capture. So he was part and parcel of the state capture years. So, so that argument of, it, of saying state capture is the reason why we are where we are does not hold at all. So he just needs to get himself up and try to work if he really wants to work. Mm. But anyway, I don't think he has much of a chance because we're taking him out this coming elections. <laughs> Let's talk about, uh, you know, 
your what were your expectations as built one south africa particularly looking at the current issues that are facing young people mm. uh, i mean there's higher education issues uh, you know there's unemployment uh, because we're sitting with a large number of young people that are not working do you think that uh, you know the country is doing enough for young people of this country you know what we expected to hear from the president was how exactly was he going to create jobs for people? Because we believe that our country, especially the youth of this country, need jobs more than anything, right? The reason why we have so many other ailments that are happening in South Africa is because of unemployment, you know? I have friends, I know people who have never been employed in their lives, you know? That tells you a story about how dilapidated the state of our nation is. People are unemployed. People do not, do not have access to education. As we speak now, I'm speaking to students from different uh, institutions of higher learning who are stranded. Registration period has passed, but mm -hmm. they're still not registered. You know, they're sleeping in, uh, in their friends' dorms. You know, they're crashing in libraries because they simply cannot get accommodation. So we wanted to hear, one, how exactly is the government going to create jobs? Number two, how is the government taking care of students? who are supposed to be going into universities but cannot at this point because they simply do not afford, you know. The other thing that we wanted, obviously everyone wants to hear this, but how exactly does the government plan to end load shedding? I think that's one of the biggest issues in this country. How is this government planning to end load shedding? And I think it's clear this government has no will or zeal to try and, aid, uh, and finish load shedding anytime soon at least. So, yeah. Mm. I mean, as Build One South Africa, <coughs> you know, let's say you voted into power after the election sure. to administration. Yes. I don't like using the word power, but uh, to public office. Yes. Um, what is it that, uh, you know, the change that you want to bring to the nation? I mean, people have been hearing all sorts of things. Yep over the years yeah. and then you know all the time we're hearing different things either the same thing but it has changed somewhere somehow it's changing soon yeah what would be the message for instance that uh, you you would want to give to the people of this country particularly as we know that uh, voter apathy is at its lowest at this stage uh, you know what i have a different argument about voter apathy i think our people know exactly what they're supposed to do, mm -hmm. but they're just not motivated enough to do it because the past 30 years have been a reason enough for anyone to feel despondent and not want to participate. But that's a topic for another day. Our first order of business is to create jobs. And we've said this in the first five years of us going into parliament of being, or being in government is to create two million jobs. Mm -hmm. And our calculations tell us that two million jobs will make sure that we can put a job in every home, you know, because that's what people need. And I'm not talking about creating a job for Uben who lives in Soweto to go and work in Sentin or go work in Pretoria. We need to create jobs where the people live, you know, so that people can be, can be able to afford themselves. You know, we need to create jobs we need to we need education reform we need to make sure that our our uh, basic education is reformed because you and i can agree that the state of our education is a mess we need to do away with this whole administration of education that we have now and make sure that we can employ teachers pay our teachers more make sure that people our teachers are motivated to teach mm -hmm. and even incentivize our our kids you know we speak of a voucher program for schools we want parents to be able to choose exactly which school they want their kids to go to and the voucher program will be able to assist in that particular grant but most importantly create jobs and we've said two million jobs at this point in the first five years of us in parliament. Township economy, make sure that we create township, I mean, uh, economic hubs yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the townships, and then make sure that also we reform the education, particularly basic education. The budget speech is coming next week. Um, what would be your expectations as a uh, uh, built one, uh, you know, South Africa? And also, uh, what is it that you don't want to hear from? Uh, the finance minister in Okodongwan, because we know there's an array of issues. There will be cuts there and there. Yeah. There's also the issue of doctors that uh, you know uh, are unemployed. Yeah. There's quite a lot of issues. What would be uh, the things that Build One South Africa would want to 
to, to hear from the finance minister and what advice would you give to the finance minister? It's a sad state of affairs mm -hmm. because at this point, I mean, having listened to the president present his state of the nation, I don't think there is anything different that we can expect from any other minister who is yet to table whatever budget speech or whatever speech that they have to table. I mean, you've even listened to the debates coming from the ANC caucus. You can tell that this administration, these guys have now, have absolutely they don't have the mojo anymore to try and save the people. So to the finance minister, in fact, what we've done, uh, I'm not sure if you caught up, but yesterday we went so to Orlando West, where we went to listen to a number of entrepreneurs, township entrepreneurs, yeah. just trying to understand what are some of their aspirations, what are their needs, what are their wants, what can, what can government do, or what can anyone who is willing to assist do really to try and make sure that their business, businesses can thrive in the, in, in the, in the, in the township. But we want to hear how will government try and boost up infrastructure in the township. You know, roads are one of the biggest problems. So transportation in and out of the, of the township is a problem. So we want to make sure that we want to hear how is the government going to boost infrastructure in the township. But not only that, we also want to hear how are they planning to improve the state of the ICT in the townships because most businesses are not functional because ICT is one of the biggest problems in this world where technology actually is leading. We want to make sure, we want to hear how is the government gonna improve the state of technology in the townships. Henry Masoko, much appreciated. I know we've had little time, but uh, we will definitely have you on the show. Much appreciated it's for coming. Sure. That was uh, Built One South Africa Youth Leader Henry Masuku giving us the party's insights on, the, uh, on this year's uh, State of the Nation address. Quite a lot of issues that he has raised there. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Thabo Mulukwani. We're almost at the end of the show. And I've been looking at the last week's State of the Nation address by President Cyril Damaposa uh, in Cape Town. And also, uh, political parties have also weighed in on uh, uh, Sona, you know, expressing their disappointment in the speech by the President. And now joining us in studio is Razum Zansi's Chief Organizer, Magashu Legano, is joining us in studio. Mr. Gane, thanks for taking the time and joining us. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Tavo, and thanks uh, for the invite. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel honored and privileged to be sitting here with a person of uh, your caliber and uh, at a station like uh, Soito TV. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, you know, I'm interested in finding out, you know, your thoughts as Razum Zanti about Son. Obviously, you have so much to say about what the president said. Uh, you know, uh, quite highlighted a few issues there, but. Uh, I think the issue was the how part was the one that was missing in quite a lot of um, uh, the promises that he made. And also people were saying that, look, this is somehow of a copy and paste kind of a situation. Tavo, you know, when one was listening to the president delivering the state of the nation, which read more like a history lesson. Uh, I mean, for someone that was uh, probably born uh, in 2005 or 2000, listening to the president, uh, could have been a bit lost. Yeah. For the life that was referred was not uh, the life that uh, they, they, they are born into. For me, it was also underwhelming. Uh, on his part, I think he missed an opportunity to give a, a fair reflection of the state of uh, the country, the state of uh, many young people and even older people. I mean, we've got... Uh, people of my generation uh, that uh, uh, 40 years uh, they've been alive but they've never had an opportunity to work you know because they haven't had a, an opportunity to taste the fruit of democracy i found the the speech to be a bit uh, disingenuous in how it spoke to the challenges that uh, the country faces whether it's the issues of crime uh, the violent crime many south africans are unsafe the state of Transnet and ESCOM, and, and what uh, brought uh, those, these kind of issues to the fore. And in the main, it's around the leadership uh, that uh, these institutions uh, are headed uh, by. You know, like that's why ourselves as Rising Sons, we argue that for South Africa to prosper, for South Africa to be safe, 
we do need uh, new leaders and uh, I did find that speech to be very underwhelming and it was an opportunity missed. I mean, you are speaking about an opportunity missed and also touched on the life that he spoke about. We know that he touched on the Tintualo analogy and, mm. and uh, you know, um, I mean, although Tintualo may exist, but, uh, uh, you know, contrary to what he said, many young people have not benefited from, uh, you know, uh, what she has, you know, what, what actually the president was talking about because now that the numbers are very high of young people that are not working and as you're saying even older people that mm. have not even set foot at any workplace there but um what do you think um this current government is doing wrong is it an issue of uh you know unethical leadership yeah. uh an issue of uh also just not having the political will to do things that are right and then just blatant corruption it's, it's a combination of all those factors, mm. uh, the political will, uh, but also the kind of people that get, uh, uh, you know, like appointed uh, in these positions, critical positions, heading the police, mm. heading Transnet, heading ESCOM, uh, heading, um, you know, like uh, many public schools and so forth. A and coupled with that, we have people that both, we, we, we have a political problem and a bureaucratic problem in that uh, a significant number of public servants don't see their role as being to make South Africa uh, mm. to work. I mean, I'll give you an instance that we talk about uh, the issue of uh, illegal migration, uh, the fake, uh, the fake uh, papers that foreign nationals uh, yeah. get in South Africa. They get it from South Africans. It's South Africans who work at home affairs that then take a 200, bribe, 200 rand bribe, a 5,000 rand bribe yeah. to issue these fake uh, papers to people that shouldn't be getting papers. It's South Africans, uh, some the police, the traffic officials, that they do stop these goods when they are coming from other countries. They know they haven't been declared, but because someone pays uh, a, a 5,000, in some instances, a 200 rand bribe, mm -hmm. then we, we, we are actually ourselves as South Africans, we are selling the country out then we sit on the other side and, uh, and complain about it. And it is that kind of dishonesty that I'm talking about from the president and the government in accepting that there has to be a fundamental change in terms of the people that we, we employ to, to be part of uh, the public service. And that's why we've even called ourselves as Rise and Sons that you need to depoliticize yeah. the public service. It should not matter, Tabo. It should not matter whether it's Rise Mzanzi that's in government or another organization, if you are employed as a teacher, you must wake up and teach. If you are employed as a doctor, you must wake up and, and heal the sick. But what we currently have, it's you have teachers, you have doctors, you've got municipal workers, that things that uh, they owe their being uh, to the political party. Whereas what pays them is actually the money from South Africans. There's no political party that pays any public servant. Mm. I mean, we know that uh, the president, uh, you know, is sitting with the controversial NHI bill mm. also in the office, uh, which uh, awaits his signature. Um, what, as Razum Zanz, what do you make of, of this NHI bill? Do you think the country is ready to go that route? Or uh, we still need quite a lot of um, uh, consultations and capable people that will be able to guide us through this whole process. We need to get the basics right. We need to get the nurses that we currently employed, yeah. uh, not to wait for the NHI. If there's someone that sick needs to be attended today, they need to do so. You know, like there's all, almost this thing that uh, uh, you get the Department of Health saying, no, we are waiting for NHI before yeah. things will be better. People are dying now. Why wait for, for, for NHI? We want the doctors, we want the nurses to do what they are employed to do and not wait for, for the NHI to then say, no, now that we, there's an NHI, we must attend to the sick. South Africans are facing serious challenges in the, in the health system as it is because of the professionalism sometimes that's lacking from, from, uh, from the nurses. And some, some of these things are introduced like uh, uh, as if they are going to be a silver bullet. Uh, it's mm. not, the NHI is not going to be a silver bullet in terms of uh, changing the, the, the health uh, care sector in South Africa. 
Well, actually, um, before I let you go, I know we are mm. running out of time. We don't really have much. But I want to understand now, there will mm. be the budget speech next week. Mm. Raisa Mzansi, what do you think should be some of the key issues from Finance Minister? Let's put the state of the nation because, I mean, you mm. have uh, alluded to the fact that it has failed. Uh, the people of this country, it hasn't really uh, outlined some of the challenges that South Africans are facing. The Finance Minister will table the budget which forms part of every single department there. Mm. But I want to he hear your thoughts as Razim Zanz. What do you think should be in that budget speech next week? There should be a tax relief for single mothers. Mm. Single mothers in South Africa are going through the most. We have an, an issue of uh, violent crime, the burden of care. It's not easy being a single mother in South Africa in 2024. And I say this because I, I myself, I was raised by a single mother. I know how hard it is, especially when you've got the children that are in day, either in daycare, in school or university. Mm. So what I, for me, and, and for Rise Mzanzi, how we are going to look at the budget and, and analyze it is through the lens and the eye of a, a single mother. Because if we don't take care of single mothers, then there's no way we can talk of uh, uh, taking care of, of, of a broader society because they are our mothers and they are taking care of over 90% of all children that are raised by single parents in South Africa. Magashule Ghana, much appreciated for coming to the show. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. That was uh, Makashule Ghan, who is the chief organizer for Rise of Zanti, giving us his opinions on the uh, State of the Nation address speech as uh, Rise of Zanti, they are reacting to what the president, uh, uh, you know, said last week in Cape Town. I mean, we know the speech has received a lot of backlash as it was perceived as a repetition from the previous State of the Nation address speeches. Well, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email, it's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Or you can call or WhatsApp us if there's anything else at 081-531-8857. For myself, Tabo Mulukwani, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching. <laughs>